It had taken barely 15 minutes for the verdict of Henry VIII's longtime friend and former Lord Chancellor to come back guilty. Thomas More had been convicted of high treason. He had refused to sign the Oath of Supremacy, acknowledging Henry VIII as the head of the church in England and disavowing the Pope's authority and supremacy. The gruesome death that Thomas was to have was read out loud to him. That he should be carried back to the Tower of London by the help of William Kingston, sheriff, and from thence drawn on a hurdle through the city of London to Tyburn, there to be hanged till he should be half dead, that he should be cut down alive, his privy parts cut off, his belly ripped, his bowel burnt, his four quarters sit up over the four gates of the city, and his head upon London Bridge. After Thomas's sentencing, he was taken back to the Tower of London by armed guard, with the point of an axe being pointed towards him. Thomas's daughter, Margaret, had been waiting on the route that she knew that her father would be taken. Thomas had a particularly close relationship with his daughter, Margaret. He affectionately called her Meg. She had both written letters to him and visited him many times during his long imprisonment in the tower. Heartbroken and grief-struck, she pushed her way past the archers and the guards to reach her father. Margaret was unable to speak. She embraced her father tightly. It was said that afterwards more, asking leave of the archers, bade her have patience, for it was God's will, and she had long known the secret of his heart. After going ten or twelve steps, she returned and embraced him again, to which he said nothing, except to bid her pray to God for his soul, and this without tears or change of color. Henry VIII would ultimately commute the sentence to just beheading at the Tower of London on the day when the court would be leaving for the summer. Five days after Thomas More had been convicted of treason, an old friend, Thomas Pope, was given the charge to tell him that his execution was nigh at hand. It was early in the morning on July 6th, and his execution had been scheduled in just a few short hours for 9 a.m. that same day. He also let Thomas know that the king had asked that he not make a big speech to the people before his death. You do well to acquaint me with the king's pleasure, for I had otherwise designed to have made a speech to the people. But it matters not. And I am ready to conform myself to his highness's pleasure. And I beseech you, sir, you would become a suitor to his majesty that my daughter Margaret may attend my funeral. Thomas's friend let him know that Margaret, his wife, children, and some of his other friends would be able to be present at his execution. When he arrived at the scaffold, it was very poorly built and it almost seemed as if it were going to fall down. More was frail and needed assistance up. He asked the lieutenant, Sir, see me safe up. And as to my coming down, let me shift for myself. More addressed the crowd, a crowd that had barely a dozen civic dignitaries and 20 to 30 ordinary citizens. It had been said that More said, he died the king's good servant, but God's first. As he laid his head upon the block, he asked the executioner to wait until he was able to move his beard because that had committed no treason. Thomas More's life ended with one blow of the ax on the 6th of July, 1535. He was 57 years old. His body was buried at the church at the Tower of London in an unmarked grave. His head was put on a pike on London Bridge. Thomas More's daughter, Margaret, collected her father's head from its pike around a month later, rescuing it 
from being thrown into the Thames. She put it in a casket, keeping it with her until she herself died in 1577. Margaret was buried in St. Dunstan's Church in Canterbury in her husband's family vault, the Roper Vault, and as she requested, her father's head was laid next to her. In 1597, the Roper Vault was enlarged and rebuilt. The casket containing Thomas More's head was moved and placed behind an iron grill in the new vault where it lies to this day behind a locked door. The last time the vault was opened was 1997. Thomas More was canonized by the Roman Catholic Church in 1935. He's the patron saint of statesmen and politicians.